Muhammad, peace be upon his soul. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From among all the prophets, Muhammad was the last, as his was a mission of the greatest task. There was only moral degeneration. People clung to idol adoration for omission. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulihi al-ameen. Nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said that the best generation is my generation. And those who follow them and those who follow them. The scholars looked at this hadith and they understood from it that there are three best generations ever humanity had seen. The best generation is the generation of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. And then those who followed them, the generation of At-Tabi'een. And the last generation is the generation of Tabi'i At-Tabi'een, those who saw those who followed the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Therefore, it is essential if we would like to understand Islam properly, if we would like to live a happy life, if we would like to reach the paradise that Allah Azza wa Jal had made for us, it is essential that we study the biography, the seerah, the stories of the men who revolved the Prophet والسلام, who were with the Prophet والسلام, and who supported the Prophet they are the best generation ever to walk the earth. And it was not because of their strength and might. It was not because of their wealth. It was not because of their beauty and the way they were built. It was not even because of their lineage or the tribes they descended from. It was because they were the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. They were the safety valve that preserved this religion. They had their full devotion and loyalty to Allah the Almighty, to the religion of Islam, and to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. They gave their lives. They immigrated, left everything behind for the sake of Allah the Almighty. They gave their lives to the cause of Islam, to protect Islam so that we can enjoy this beautiful religion safely in our homes, among our families, without being forced to migrate or to abandon any of the luxuries we are enjoying today. These beloved companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they were the ones who preserved Islam and gave this beautiful religion to us. And that is why studying their biography, knowing them is essential. Imagine if a person of us nowadays, any Muslim, goes to paradise and enters paradise, if Allah is willing. If we take a look at those inhabiting paradise, most likely we would not recognize a lot of them, if any. But if one, may Allah forbid, enters hell, we will have a lot and a lot of acquaintances. We would recognize the majority in hell, which means that our life is not in accordance to the Quran nor to the Sunnah. Among 
the best generation among this beautiful generation of the companions, there stand a number of companions. Of course, the best of them all are the ten who the Prophet ﷺ gave the glad tidings to that they will be in paradise. And these ten are the closest companions to the Prophet ﷺ. And the best of these ten are four. And they are known as al khulafa al rashidun the rightly guided caliphs. And they are Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. May Allah be pleased with them. And the best of them, without any doubt, is Abu Bakr as siddiq May Allah be pleased with him. And he will be the focal point that we will try to not study his biography because this would require a lot of dedication and time to go through the life of the greatest man in Islam after the Prophet ﷺ. And this is something we could not afford. But we will take few glimpses of his beautiful life. This companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who the Prophet himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had great love and respect for. His name was Abu Bakr Siddiq. This is how people knew him. Abu Bakr meaning the father of Bakr but his real name was Abdullah and his father's name was Abu Quhafa yet his real name was Uthman. So he was Abu Bakr ibn Abi Quhafa. And it was said that his title was Atiq, which has two meanings. One meaning is old. And that is why we say Al-Baytul Atiq when we refer to Kaaba, which means the old or the ancient house of Allah. The other meaning is freed from slavery. So if you have a slave and you free him, he becomes atiq. And some scholars say that he was called atiq because he was handsome. Others say that because he was, since the beginning of time, a generous person giving money into means of charity without thinking twice. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, was born after the year of the elephant by two years plus, two years and six months. What is the year of the elephant? This has nothing to do with the Chinese calendar where they have mouses and monkeys and so on. At the time, of the early Arabs, they used to commemorate certain dates with events. So they relate them together. And the year of the elephant is when the ruler of Yemen came to conquer Mecca because he was instructed by the Persians, by the head of the Persian Empire, to demolish the Kaaba and this had its roots it was said that they built a synagogue or a temple or a place of worship so that they would draw the Arabs into worshiping it instead of going to Mecca to worship Allah and once they finished this beautiful monument and this beautiful building a Bedouin came and he was outraged by this so-called blasphemy, act of blasphemy to them. Though they were pagans, they held great respect to the house of Allah, to the Kaaba. And when they saw this imitation, this mutilation, they decided that it was time for them to do something about it. And this Arab went in and he did what he had to do. Was it right? Was it wrong? What did he do? Well, he did something that made 
the brains flip of the Persians and of the people of Yemen. And this is what we will discuss, inshallah, after the break. So stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So when the Arabs heard of this monument or this house of worship that was built to compete with the Kaaba, one of them was outraged and he did an evil act. He went at night to that house of worship and he put dirt and filth all over the walls and he left. And when they woke up and saw this, they knew that it was done by the Arabs. So they got their army ready. They got their elephants, which were creatures that the Arabs had never encountered before in their lives. And they marched to demolish and destroy the Kaaba. They took some sheep and camel, cattle of Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of the Prophet ﷺ, who was the head of the Qurayshis at the time. And he went to the ruler of, or to the leader of this army to ask him to give him back his cattle. And the man was astonished. He said that, I am here to destroy your house of worship and you're here to negotiate with me that I return to you your sheep and camels? What kind of a people are you? And the man said, in complete faith and trust in Allah, he said, I am the Lord of these animals. That's why I look after them. But the house of Allah has its Lord and he will look after it. And the story goes on as we know. And as it was documented in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Fil, where Allah Azza wa Jal sent birds with stones, killing every single one of them. And the elephant could not proceed, not one step forward. And Allah protected his house. In that year, our beloved Prophet وسلم, was born. And two years and a half afterwards, his beloved companion, Abu Bakr as Siddiq was born. And as you recall, he was known to be Abu Bakr as Siddiq, though as Siddiq is not his family name. It is a title. And this title is either given due to an action or a tribe or some characteristic in a person. So, for example, we know Abu Musa al Ash'ari. May Allah be pleased with him. So we know he is from the tribe of al Ash'ari. And we know that, for example, Abu Bakr as Siddiq, this is not a tribe, but this is due to the fact that he used to believe whatever the Prophet told him. So, a Sadiq is a person who tells the truth. And if you believe someone and you believe him a lot, you become a Siddiq. And this is a status that a Muslim is given when he is a true believer. And that is why Allah described those in paradise to be the prophets, a Siddiqeen, those who believe entirely of what Allah and the Prophet ﷺ tells us, and the martyrs and the righteous people. This is what we usually, the four times, what we ask Allah to make us with on the day of judgment. And Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, was named a Siddiq because he was the first to accept Islam among the men. So the minute the Prophet told him, alayhi salatu wasalam, I saw the archangel Jibril and he revealed the Quran and I was instructed by Allah Azza wa Jal to deliver the message of Islam and that is to believe in the oneness of Allah and that he is the only God worthy of being worshipped. Immediately Abu Bakr accepted this 
and he believed it. So he was the first to accept Islam among the men. While Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her, the wife of the Prophet ﷺ, was the first among the women to accept Islam. And as we know, Ali ibn Abi Talib was the first among the children to accept Islam. And Zayd ibn Haritha was among the first of the slaves to accept Islam. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq had full trust in the Prophet ﷺ. And that is why he was called as siddiq the pagans came to Abu Bakr and they told him, didn't you hear what your friend said? And he said, what did he say? The pagan said, he claims that he was taken last night from Mecca to Jerusalem and then he was taken to the seventh heaven and then came back to Mecca in one night. Though the journey from Mecca to Jerusalem is a month long journey on camelback the minute he heard this from the pagans he said i believe him and they were astonished they were shocked you believe him it takes a full month to go and another one to come back and your friend claims that he did this in less than a few hours he said i believe him i believe him when he says that he was revealed by the creator of the heavens and the earth so you don't want me to believe him that he went on such a journey. This was Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him. It was reported by Anas ibn Malik, and this hadith is in Al-Bukhari. The Prophet ﷺ was once with Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman. The four of them were on top of the Mount Uhud, the famous Mount Uhud. And while they were on top of it, it trembled. So the Prophet ﷺ struck the ground with his foot and said, Be calm, Uhud, because on top of you is only a prophet, and that is him, a Siddiq, the one who believes, and that is Abu Bakr, and two martyrs, and those were Umar and Uthman. May Allah be pleased with them all. So the Prophet ﷺ was the one to describe Abu Bakr with this beautiful title, as siddiq the one who believes. Abu Bakr family was a very honorable family. It was the only family in Islam to have four generations of companions. So the father was Abu Quhafa, he was a Muslim. His son was Abu Bakr, and he was Muslim. His other son was Abdurrahman ibn Abi Bakr and his son was Muhammad. They all saw the Prophet ﷺ. And if you would like to do it from the female side, you have Abu Quhafa and then Abu Bakr and then his daughter Asma, may Allah be pleased with her, and then her son Abdullah ibn Zubair ibn al Awam, may Allah be pleased with the companions all. Abu Bakr was known at the time of ignorance, in the time of Jahiliyyah, to be a straightforward man. He did not indulge in any kind of fornication or adultery. He did not consume intoxicants like it was the habit to drink wine excessively. He did not gamble. He did not worship their idols. So the closest person for him at that time was the Prophet ﷺ, who was known to be the honest and the truthful before he was revealed to, before he became the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah. He was known to be the truthful and the honest. And Abu Bakr was the best friend of the Prophet ﷺ, so was the Prophet. He was the best friend of Abu Bakr at that time. And this was known in Arabia. And that is why when Abu Bakr embraced and reverted and accepted Islam, he was tortured, he was abused, he was beaten at some stage or the other. Yet this did not make him go back from the light that he had found. And at one stage, 
when the Prophet ﷺ approved and instructed his companions to migrate to Abyssinia. He told them that, go to Abyssinia, there is a fair and just ruler, a fair and just king, and people would not be treated unfairly at his reign. So Abu Bakr wanted to set sail, and he left Mecca. As he was leaving, he was met by one of the tribesmen, the famous leaders of his tribe, and his name is Ibn al-Dagunna. And Ibn al-Dagunna met him and asked him, Abu Bakr, where are you setting for? Where are you going? So Abu Bakr said, I'm leaving Mecca and I'm going to Abyssinia because I would like to worship Allah and my people are preventing me from doing this. So Ibn al told him that the likes of you do not leave and they do not make others make them leave. You are among the few who give those who do not have money. You connect to the next of kin. You help those who cannot be carried and you are hospitable to your guests. And you also help those who are struck by calamities. Do not leave Mecca. I will be your guardian. I will be your guard and protector. And he went back to Mecca. Ibn al went to all the people, the dignitaries of Mecca, and told them, do not approach Abu Bakr. Let him worship Allah in his house. Now, the moral of the story is that these are exact words that Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her, described the Prophet ﷺ. When he was first revealed to, he thought that there's something wrong. I'm not insane, and I don't want to be called as an insane person. And she told him that Allah would not fail you because you give the poor, you help the needy, you connect with the next kin, and you are hospitable to your guests. So do not be afraid. The same words were used by Ibn Dughanna with Abi Bakr, which means that they shared a lot of characteristics, the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr went to his house and he started praying and nobody came to him. Nobody did anything bad to him. After a while, he built a small mosque, a prayer hall in the backyard of his house and he started praying. And whenever he prayed and recited the Quran, he used to weep and cry. He was a very light-hearted man, very tender, very soft. So the women would come and listen to him. The children would come and listen to him, astonished of this man reciting these beautiful words that they've never heard before. And he's weeping and crying. And then the people went to Ibn al and asked him to make him stop because he's not worshiping Allah in his house. He went out to the backyard. Ibn al went to him and he told him, I can't protect you anymore if you continue. Abu Bakr said, I thank you for what you've done. I will only seek the protection of Allah, the Almighty. This was Abu Bakr, and I'm afraid that this is all the time we have for today's program. But inshallah, we will continue to talk about this beloved companion of our Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. And until then, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Muhammad, peace be upon his soul. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From among all the prophets, Muhammad was the last, as his was a mission of the greatest task. There was only moral degeneration. People clung to idol adoration For all nations he was al-Mukhtar